Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today you join me for a pretty exciting unboxing, at least for myself. I have been waiting for this kit for a very long time. This is Ming's new 148 scale J20 Chinese Stealth Fighter. Obviously we've had the Trumpeter kit that's been out for I think about a year or so, but there were some issues with that kit. I had that kit, um, initially bought it from China, and in its transit here, it not only got banged around, but also upon opening the box, I discovered that there were multiple areas of the kit that I was not particularly happy with. The cockpit, the engines, etc. just look very basic. But hopefully this kit will be a lot better, at least from the CAD drawings, it looks quite a bit nicer. And yeah, obviously this box is massive, so it's still sealed. I'm going to unseal it, open it, get the parts out, lay them out here on the table, and then we will take a look at them from there. There's not much to see on the box. It's just the artwork, which is very pretty, by the way. And yeah, so be right back. All right, so here's everything that was in that massive box, out of the box, now laid out on the bench. So first, I want to call attention to the fact that this is going to be a massive airplane. This is the fuselage itself without the, well, I mean, it's not going to be much longer than this. This by itself is almost 18 inches long. So if you're expecting a compact aircraft, it is not small. This is like, I'm guessing like if you're, if you have a kit in your collection, like a 48 scale MiG-31 size, probably a little bit, so somewhere around there. So if you have a frame of reference, it's definitely bigger than F-22, um, which is the next sort of visual cousin to it. But yeah, so that's the fuselage halves. We'll take a look at that in a minute. The instruction sheet is that, or the instruction booklet is actually tiny compared to the rest of this. But yeah, so multiple sprues, sheeted decals, a little bit of photo etch, and the instruction manual right here. So we're going to take a look through the instructions. We, we, we won't obviously look at every step of the way, but... Yeah, so instructions open in this nice little booklet, very, very nicely printed. Some little blurbs about building. We won't go into detail there, assuming if you're watching this, you're a bit of an experienced builder, so you know what you're doing roughly. And we're straight in with the build. But we're not going to call out everything in here, just things that I see that look interesting. Obviously, building the refueling probe, the cockpit going in from the bottom and then adding to the engine fairings and stuff stuff like that. Again, intakes done in halves, not ideal, but we're used to it. It's kind of what it is. Go slow, clean up the seam, sand it back, paint it white, or paint it, I think it's actually a light blue color. So yeah, moving on, adding the intakes to the fuselage, building the weapons bay, the massive internal weapons bay, adding some missiles in there, and then adding that to the lower fuselage, adding the side weapons bays, adding the, the landing gear bays, adding the engines. The engines are done as multi-piece sort of assemblies that you're kind of building around this sort of central frame as you build the pedals onto it. And then adding the exhaust, the flame holder. Looks like you do get option for open or closed engines, so that is nice. Those also look like the new engine style, so that is good to see there. Adding the sort of lower front fuselage and intakes to the main fuselage that's actually really interesting this be careful of your alignment i'm guessing you don't want to mess that up adding the massive top plate to the lower sort of front and or front and rear halves together option for having the uh side sort of cheek weapons bays open or closed What's interesting is you can have the door closed and I think have the missile hanging outside. I think I think it can be displayed that way. That, that, that would actually be kind of cool. So yeah, the main weapons doors are hinged and open as such. You can also have them closed. Here you can see a little bit of uh, showing the geometry, making sure that that's lined up. Wheels in halves, gear, pretty simple, straightforward, just straight gear adding in the various actuators and stuff, and adding the gear to the bays. Adding the gear doors, building the nose gear. Again, not, not much sort of to write home about. This nice close-up color diagram is nice, having you be able to see what's going on. This is also nice. Sometimes uh, these manufacturers have these little sort of ejection things on it that are molded and look kind of like a detail then not really like a detail and you're not sure do i chop that off or do i leave it so it's nice that Meng calls that out for you to take that off these are also nice 
having you add the hinges to the door separately so you can add these later in the build. You don't have to sort of add these and then build the plane around it and create a bunch of issues. So that is nice to see. This is the, uh, I don't know what that is exactly. That might be some sort of uh, sighting system or something like that that goes on the bottom. Flaps and slats. I don't know if you can have these, oh yeah, you can have them raised or lowered, which is nice, good options. Just just uh, cut the tabs off, I think. Again, calling out the unnecessary bits. That one's a bit more obvious than the one on the landing gear, obviously. So adding the flaps, you can have them flaps retracted or flaps uh, fla flaps, yeah, flaps attracted or flaps up, and then you can have flaps down, which is nice. Optional parts, tails being added. It would be interesting to see if you can turn these. I think you could, because it is just a simple pin that goes in there. Of course, it is an issue of strength then, so make sure you aren't banging this around. Adding the seat, I don't know um, if anybody's going to come out with uh, aftermarket, but I have heard that a couple of smaller Chinese vendors are working on some detail sets for this kit, namely seats and also exhaust nozzles, as well as armament. So stay tuned for an update from me on that. Adding the seat, you get some photo edge belts, which is nice. The pilot, very standard looking pilot, adding him to his seat and then adding the instrument panel. Be interesting to see how this looks in the kit. The trumpeter one was, I feel like a little bit more basic. It's been a while since I've had it, so I don't know. I don't remember actually. The clear parts looks like you get the the sort of the frame or the the fairing that the canopy goes in, and the glass separate. This is going to be interesting. Be really careful when you trim this out that you don't accidentally crack it or you cut too far. Cut it with a pair of sharp side cutters and then very very gently sand back so you don't have a giant gap somewhere along this very uh, curved edge. Adding interior framing. This is really interesting actually. I've never seen it or I haven't seen it done this way in a long time. Adding the internal framing, these parts, I'm guessing, are going to be super fragile. I think these are actually provided in photo etch. So go slow, test fit, don't ham fist it, and you will be okay. Oh, this is interesting, actually. I just realized this. They give you two options. So you have a canopy that, that that's actually got this stuff molded into it. Or you can choose to go the complicated route with the photo etch details. That's actually really nice. Very thoughtful addition by Ming right there. So if you want to go and mess around with this, which will be cool, um, you can try it. If you mess it up, you have a backup. So that's nice. Adding the canopy with the actuator mechanism. Adding the open canopy with the open actuator mechanism. Nothing too interesting there. And this is really nice, actually. They include for you an open refueling probe as well as a ladder. So if you want to display this on the ground with the cockpit open, uh, maybe not with the pilot in it or just as he got in and the ladder's not off yet, that'll be nice. But it's an option, nice option to have in the kit for you. And then paint options. I believe you get probably one option, right? I would say in terms of paint. There's not a whole lot of markings on this. There's usually only one serial number on the tail and sometimes they have one sort of on the front fuselage under this door right here. So I suspect you could easily change this around and have a different aircraft. But out of the box, you get one option, I believe. And it's for this sort of cloud pattern. There's also one initially that they had was a more sort of geometric scheme. That one's actually kind of cool as well. But paint callouts are in, ah, right here. Paint callouts are for AK or sort of uh, Mr. Color acrylics. I think these translate uh, more or less to their acrylic lacquers too, but it looks like Meng has partnered with AK. But yeah, so callouts right there, nothing too interesting there. You probably have most of those in your collection, just a couple of random colors that you might have to add. Parts map, which is nice. It's not a super complicated kit. There's not a lot of parts, but you do get quite a bit to work with. Decals and photo etch right there. And then that's it. So, okay, we're going to, I'm going to clear this off the bench. I'm going to open these bags and then we'll take a look at the parts individually, sprue by sprue. So stand by, we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. After removing a lot of plastic bags to save you the noise, 
we are back. So obviously what you want to see most is the fuselage, which is what everything's going to go into and the most important part of this kit. So this is the top fuselage plate. It does come in top and sort of bottom front and back plates that will fit together like that. You have details that go in there and you glue this down on top. But we'll take a look at that in a minute. Top plate molded as one with the wings. So there is no seam here, which is great actually. Props to Meng for doing that. What's, and this is a personal preference thing. I'm not a huge fan of molded sort of ram tape. It is, I get why they do it. It's because it would be too difficult to provide it as a set of decals because each individual aircraft is a little different in terms of coloring or fading or whatever. And that's why they mold it on. The difference with the J20 is unlike the F-35 or the early F-35s or the F-22s, the tape is not really a different color. I believe it gets painted with the aircraft. So it doesn't have that sort of grid pattern that like early F-22s or F-35s had. So it would have been fine to have this molded smooth sort of and have it as just a, or have it be less pronounced. This isn't terrible, honestly. Um, I think there's a lot of other kits out there that are much more pronounced and therefore not as great. But this will be fine. I think with a, with a coat of primer, maybe a light sanding to sort of tone it down a little bit, I think you'd be okay. Don't go in there with a black wash and highlight each one of these edges and panels and each one of these little rivets. It doesn't, the real aircraft doesn't look like that. They're not weathered. They're pretty clean with just a little bit of patchy paintwork. And that's it. So yeah, that's the top fuselage plate. We're not going to go into the RAM anymore. I think it'll be okay. If I, if, if I build this and it looks horrible, then we'll all know I was wrong. But the inside, this is really nice, has this crazy stiffening uh, grid work in here that this is not going to bend unless you want to bend it and break it in half. It is not going to bend. This is very stiff. It is not going to warp. If you have it in storage or anything, it is really nice. So that's the top fuselage. We'll get that out of the way. All right, and then we move on to the bottom fuselage. So the bottom fuselage is done in two pieces. So you got this front piece and then you got this big main piece right here. This piece obviously has a lot of stiffening molded into it because it's mostly hollow or mostly, it's got all these giant openings in it. So you got the main weapons bay, the side sort of chin or cheek weapons bays, the main landing gear bays, as well as the opening for the engines in the back. So be really careful chopping all this stuff out. I would chop it far away from it uh, using thick side cutters and then cut close back and then sand it smooth back here so you're not destroying any of this fine sawtooth. But yeah, so inside, again, nothing really to talk about except this strengthening system here that they have, which means that this is not going to, to, to flex. This is a big aircraft. It's pretty long out front. And this fuselage, if it did not have this, I suspect it'd be a little bit floppy. So yeah. Not much else to write about here, or not much else to talk about here. The main we weapons bays, you got big locating pins in here for the for the top fuselage. The flaps, the weapons bays do slot in. They have mounting tabs. This is the two pins where this will fit in. You can see those two holes at the bottom. Those two will go onto those two pegs right there. But yeah, th th that's this. And then the front. So again, not much else to talk about. Molded as a single piece. It's nice that these parts, the intake sort of, um, I don't know what you call this, but the part of the intake that is attached to the fuselage is also molded with the fuselage. That's one less seam down here that you're gonna have to worry about. Hopefully the rest of this, um, it looks like it's got some big beefy uh, holes here for the intake to click into. Hopefully that fits well and shouldn't have a problem there, but it should all line up well. From what I've been told of what of, of the other new Meng aircraft kits, Meng is obviously mostly known for armor, they just recently got an aircraft, Super Hornets, um, Phantoms, and the such. Um, they've all been building up pretty well. Fits good. Everything is generally okay. Again, very sharp molded details here. A little bit of raised detail. I like those molded sort of um, stiffeners or the, or the discharge strips on the nose right there. Very sharp recessed rivet detail. Panel detail there. A little recessed slime light. That's nice. And then... Uh, some more of that ram uh, honestly if you don't like it sand it off but i think honestly under some paint under primer paint more paint clear coat decals flat coat 
weathering, I think you'll be okay. So that's the fuselage. We'll get those out of the way. And we'll, and then we will move into, this is sprue E. Uh, this is not gonna be in order just because I have them in a mess over here laid out, but sprue E obviously has the cockpit or the pilot arms. Um, oh, there's the pilot, there's his head. Ejection seat edges, or this, the size of the ejection seat look very nice. Um, obviously it's not gonna be close to resin. I do know there is a company working on 3D printed replacements for this, so stand by for that. More news to come. These are the main landing gear legs, very chunky and beefy. I think those would be just fine. Landing gear doors, the instrument panel, which does look very nice actually. It's got that big main screen, as well as the side consoles and switches. I think there's a decal that goes over that. That's the framing for the canopy right there. Be careful trimming that off. You don't want to over sand these edges and sort of kill the compound curve right there. The cockpit tub, we'll take a look at that right there. Got some switches in there. It's not going to be crazy detailed. All these modern stealth jets have like one control lever, one knob, and like an instrument panel with a giant touchscreen. So there's not really much going on in the cockpit tub to begin with. Main landing, or the nose landing gear bay has a little bit of cabling molded in at the bottom. Sides are mostly blank. I don't think you're gonna see much of it. I wouldn't worry. Landing gear, the nose landing gear is a little bit bent on the side there, which is not ideal, but I think we're gonna be able to fix it by bending it backwards. As soon as we put the wheel in there, I think we'll be okay. So yeah, the, the uh, combing, nice raised detail on there, very sharply done. A little bit of bolts on the bottom, bottom side there. Very clean, and yeah, that is for E. Next we have, this is sprue A, and these are, uh, we'll go with those, those, those in a minute. This is the main weapons gear, or main weapons bay, which is very nicely molded, has a little bit of cabling in it. I suspect the real aircraft does have a lot more cabling. It's probably a mess of cables in there, but this, at least, no ejector pin marks in this sort of rib detail. If you want to add more detail, I'm sure it'll be go to town on it. If you can, if you can find references, by the way, um, these are, I think the, uh, gear bays. Yeah. Or these are the gear bays. But other than that, molded cable, that's actually really nice. Molded sort of cabling that goes over these ribs. Obviously it is solid to the bottom, but think about it. This is going to be sitting on the bottom of an aircraft that sits pretty low to the ground. So I don't think you're going to be able to see that even if you have the weapons bay open, even if you have a mirror down there, it'll be hard to see. So yeah, but good to see no ejector pin marks and all that detail. All of them are on the back surfaces. Here are the vertical tails right there. They are molded as single pieces, which is nice. Same goes for the horizontal tails molded as single pieces, so you don't have to deal with halves. That's one of the things I like about Ming's new aircraft kits. They're all, stuff that doesn't need to be in halves is not in halves, and it's not molded. It's not like, oh, we can do this as a single piece, but we're gonna do it as two pieces just for the hell of it. I think these molded as single pieces, even if, I don't know, if there's some loss of like detail fidelity, just for the sake of the build being easier, I think is a win. So yeah, here's that. This also came in the bag. I don't know what exactly these go for, but red plastic is an interesting choice. I don't know if there's going to be an option for these in clear plastic as well, but yeah, just kind of weird. And then some poly caps. I don't know what these exactly do, but we'll, we'll come back to that. All right, next two sprues come as a mashed pair. So you get two F sprues. We'll take a look at one. This is details such as the wheels, which are molded with, again, I don't really like this. Tires are molded as halves and the hub is molded separately. So if it's not done properly, you're gonna have a seam sort of where the tire meets the, the, the actual wheel, which is not realistic. Obviously it should be tight. Um, I don't know how these are gonna fit, but would have been nice to just see single, single piece wheels or single uh, two halves hub and tire, and then you just glue it all together and you just have one seam to clean up. But 
Other than that, the hub detail is nice. You get a little bit of representation of brake detail on the back. It's not resin or 3D printed, but it's not bad. Um, let's see. Here we have the engines, the or, or the uh, in the intake fan, then the flame holder, all very nicely molded in plastic. Very sharp detail on those. This is the odd. Oh, this is the intake fan. That that's, I think that's the exhaust. Um, very sharp right there. Inside, a little bit of sort of this, uh, I don't know how, how you call that detail on the sidewalls of the exhaust tube, but very nicely done there. These are the pedals of the exhaust nozzles. So you're going to be building sort of around in a, like around in a circle around a central framework. The interesting thing about these is there is a little bit of an injector pin mark on this section. You can kind of catch it there but I don't know how much of that will be visible. Um, I believe this part sort of sandwiches onto the actual uh, sort of exhaust ring. So I don't think you're gonna be able to see anything down from here or it's gonna be covered. Hopefully it is, otherwise that's not ideal. That's gonna be hard to clean up, but yeah. Outside has molded detail, recessed. These are two of those missiles. I think these are, um, I guess, the Chinese equivalent of an AMRAM. And then these are the Chinese equivalent of a Sidewinder that have a separate uh, nose cone. I believe, I, I believe those are molded clear. So, yeah. Obviously, you get two of these. We're not going to look at the other one. It's the exact same thing. All right. Next, we have Spruce C, which is the flaps and slats. Very exciting right there. Not a whole lot to talk about. Slats, also molded as one piece. This is really nice, actually. Other kits have you uh, sort of attaching these, and you have to clean up weird seams in this sort of odd area in here. Flaps are also one piece. God, this is nice. Um, no extraneous cleanup needed. This should build up pretty quickly, to be honest. Um, just clean up the parts, decide which configuration you want, not a whole lot of unnecessary seam filling. So we'll do a close up on a couple of these. Again, raised ram detail, a little bit of recessed detail on those slats. Raised, very subtle raised detail on the flaps there. That's actually really nice. That's really subtle. And then some of the details for the, I think that's the main weapons doors. Again, really nice, no ejector pin marks on the visible side everything on the back you don't really care about so whatever but these are nice very nice to see single piece control surfaces hasagawa could learn a thing or two from that okay this is sprue b sprue b obviously being the intakes and the side yeah these are like the cheek chin weapons bays that go on sort of right under the uh right under the front of the wing but the intakes, again, are molded very nicely. There is a little hint. So th th this is the side that goes towards the fuselage, I believe. But this side, very nicely molded. A little bit of raised detail, stiffener plates in here. That's very nice. The other side is not so great. There are some pin marks in there. So that's going to require some sanding. They are raised, or mostly raised. That one's a little bit recessed. But... Yeah, you're gonna have to do some sanding to clean these up. And then obviously the seam line that goes down on this along its entire length. I don't know how far you're gonna be able to see down the intakes. They do kind of go out and curve back before they hit the intake fans. So you probably only have to clean up the first half of it. No one's really gonna be able to crane their neck to see the back half. So if you're not OCD, you should be okay there. That's the exhaust sort of shroud and fairing that goes on the bottom of the fuselage right there sharp no issues there and this and this is the last uh gray plastic sprue we still have the clear sprue to go over in a minute but this is sprue d this is for the weapons bays you obviously have the lattice work that goes on the inside but you have the closed weapons base, which is nice because they give you this as a whole panel. So you're not trying to line up one, two, three, four doors separately like these parts here. If you want to have it open, 
you're gonna have to build the doors obviously, but they are separate pieces. This grid work, I believe, goes on the inside of one of these. And then you have the hinge work down here. These are the trapeze mechanisms for the inside, I believe. But it's very nice that they give you this single piece closed weapons bay should you decide to do that. But yeah, everything else, very, very sharply molded. No issues to speak of there. Yeah, okay. So that is all the gray plastic. Now we're gonna look at the clear parts and the photo etch. So the clear parts, actually I'm looking at this now, and you do, it looks like you do have some redundancy in these parts. Okay, and we're back after a quick reset. I had to check something and it turns out that I was wrong. I didn't know something about this. So if we look in the instructions, the we're gonna look at the clear parts here in a second, but this pertains to those. So I wasn't sure why they included this weird red sprue. I was like, ah, oh, that's very gimmicky, toy-like. It turns out that the J20, some of the glass is actually a little bit of a red tint. I still don't think this is the perfect tint. I would probably still put a little bit of Tamiya smoke over this to make it a little darker because it's only visible in some light. So there's a few sort of clear aperture windows of sorts. I'm going to call it that. I don't know what they're actually for. Some kind of optical sensor or something like that. There's one that's right in front of the combing, right in front of the sort of glass of the canopy. That's right there. You can see this is a top fuselage if you're looking at it upside down. It goes right in front of the canopy. There's one that goes right behind the canopy. And there is another one that goes uh, sort of on the side of the nose, as well as, where are they? There's two that go on the, sort of right by the intakes. If I can find it in here. Ah, yes. That one goes right by the intake right there by that weapons bay. The glass is actually a little bit of a weird tint. So in some light, it looks red. In some light, it looks a little orange. In some light, it looks more smoky. So I get why um, Trump or Meng included this. The other part that is included is this part down here between, yes, that part, goes right by one of the landing gear legs, right behind the main weapons bay. This part, if you look in photos, is distinctly has a red tint to it. So very interesting detail. I'm glad Maine captured that. I didn't even realize that before. I never noticed. I just thought weird reflection, probably some weird reflected light or whatever, but it's actually got a little bit of red tint. It's not this red, but it's sort of red. So I would put a little bit of smoke over this and you'll probably be okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, that's that. Now we can look at the clear parts. Um, this was in the bag with that. These are for the tails. So for the vertical tails, it will allow them some degree of movement. I probably wouldn't play with it a lot because you'll probably snap the pin and therefore have to glue it. But these are for the vertical tails. So you can attach them after painting, make it easy, make your life easier. Okay. So now we can look at the clear parts. These are the two options that you get. So you get a completely blank, clear canopy, traditional, and you get one with the molded debt cord in it. It is molded on the outside, on the inside. Um, so for this, I believe you do not get a decal for it. So yeah. So you're gonna have to be doing some creative painting to get that the correct color. But this one, this option will allow you to add a photo etch brace. So this option right here, that option is for this right here. So this deal comes as photo etch, do some creative bending and then attach it to the framing, then put the clear glass over it. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um, if you're not confident in bending photo etch and gluing it, 
and then getting the glass over it, then you do have this other option right there with the molded dead cord, which is what this is for. You're gonna be doing some very careful painting to get this painted the correct color, but then you can just glue this glass directly to the framework and be done. So two options, do whatever one you want. It's good that Mang gives you that option. This is the little fret of photo etch parts. You can see that debt cord right there, as well as that frame that you have to bend, as well as the seat belts, and that's it. Not much to talk about there. Next up, we have the decal sheet plus one little tiny correction, which we won't really need to look at. It's number 25. Make sure you don't lose this when you open your decal bag, as I almost did. So here is the sheet of decals. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the, what I was mentioning here. They give you these numbers, so you are going to have to line them up on the tail. They do get applied basically across the vertical tail like that. So you can essentially build any J20 you want, check your references and see which one you want to do, and then do a little bit of creative number mixing up there. And then you have the Chinese roundels there. These are all in the low viz sort of modern gray scheme. If you want to do the, there's one early on they were doing like bright yellow primer, those are the prototypes. You're gonna have to do some custom decals for those. But these are some outlines for the weapons bays, as well as a full complement of stenciling, and also these panels save you some masking, as well as various little no steps and service markings and stuff like that. Uh, those are the rescue triangles. The interesting thing here, and if you watch the other video that I just uploaded, on the Trumpeter Z10 helicopter, the stenciling on that kit is all readable. This one is more generic, sort of dots and lines, and sort of little blurry text that is not readable. Um, very interesting contrast there, but it would have been nice to see a bigger complement of stencils, but also this aircraft being Chinese sort of fifth generation is very classified, at least. So there are some close-up pictures online from air shows and such, but it's not one that you're going to really be able to get up to. Even if you're Ming, Chinese company, you're not going to be able to get up to it and do a walk around like you would do with an older aircraft or such. So yeah, I get why they did it. I think it'll be okay. It doesn't have a lot of markings on it, but it does have a lot of random little stenciling around service markings and such like that. Most of them are in Chinese, but... This should suffice, honestly. I think it'll be okay. And then those are the decals for the cockpit instrument panel. So you get the, I guess it is a powered on sort of situation. You can get just the framing. You can have the, the map that goes in the middle. And these are the little screens that go kind of side by side. But yeah, that's about it. That is Ming's new 148 scale J20 Chinese stealth fighter. I think having looked at the Trumpeter kit in the past, this is a giant step above that in terms of detail, in terms of just the parts layout, everything, single piece control services, everything. It looks to be a really nice build. I can't wait to get this started. Please look for updates on this channel or more likely on our Instagram page and our Facebook page, which go by the same name. So again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this kit, if you're curious, about a certain part of it, if you're curious about the decals, if you're curious about the aircraft, please leave a comment below. I will try my best to help you out. And yeah, thanks for watching and come back next time. Take care, bye.